I already have plans for another four dresses from one pattern video so I hope you enjoy these. <laughs> Patterns are expensive. If you've spent any time around my channel, you know this. And you know also know that because of that, I think patterns should work hard for us. Now, the grey dress might be one of the most expensive patterns that I own, purely and simply because I hired a pattern cutter to make my imagination and my dream dresses into reality for me. So I spent actually a very small amount of money the I think it was I think I was paying 15 pounds an hour at the time and this was 10 years ago to this amazing pattern cutter who could take my kind of very crappy drawings and very sort of like rambly descriptions of what I was after and turn them into my dream dresses shirts trousers coats etc etc the one that you've seen the most is the grace dress now we all know that I find a pattern that I like and I make multiples of them 8577 Anna Eve to name but a few. The Grace is another one of those. I absolutely love this dress. Now it initially was designed to be made with beaded 3D high profile kind of like literal profile sort of laces and that's why it has the front panel, the side panels, no side seams and the back panels, the waist panel and then the skirt. And it was designed with 3D laces in mind so that you could use those and still have like a cleavage on show but not too much cleavage on show and then to the side panels be smooth fabric that matched so that it wasn't at you weren't adding any bulk to the silhouette at the sides and at the waist. I very quickly realized that this was an awesome dress without the lace panel over the top even if it was very booby very cleavage tastic very kind of like hello here on my boobs i am wearing a shirt to cover up the top of the dress i have got a grace on underneath all this but i am wearing a shirt over the top of this just because i can imagine that the entirety of this video would just be like me just being like boobs if if i had just the grace on having said that i've got nice boobs so i don't mind showing them off so i have made a lot of grey dresses. A lot, a lot, a lot. I love it for a number of reasons. I think it's actually a very versatile piece. As I've said, it was designed for 3D lace but can be made up in quilting cottons and look just as good. You can put any kind of skirt or trousers that you want onto this bodice. Depending on the fabric you've picked and the skirt type that you've picked, you get wildly different looking finished pieces. It's definitely a TNT for me. At one point I had outgrown the grace and I put all of mine away and I've recently been able to get them back out, try them on and they all fit again which is amazing. I did kind of play around with the pattern and enlarge it so that I could make them when I was a little bit bigger and I have a couple of those that I've put away for future proofing my wardrobe but as you guys know I completely lost my sojo over the last couple of months and I thought a really good way of getting my sojo back and making sure that it stayed was to make a bunch of dresses that I knew that I was going to love, I knew that were going to fit in fabrics that I was really excited about because majority, apart from one, these are all fabrics that I've bought this year. So I went through and have made four grace dresses, four grace bodices, as I say I'm wearing one and here are the other three and I've used a different skirt for each one. I've gone for a tiered and gathered skirt, a double circle skirt, a five panel circle skirt and a pleated and gathered skirt. I used all those different skirt options for different reasons depending on the fabric. First thing I did was get everything cut out and that was actually, I really enjoy cutting out, especially if I have an audiobook or some music to listen to, so very very much enjoyed that process. Got everything cut out apart from a few pieces of lining that I kind of then did along the way as I was coming to those dresses. Once everything was cut out I knew that I was going to have some bias issues with the circle skirts so I made those up first. I made up the five panel circle skirt from the cotton lawn. I wasn't 100% sure if this was going to drop on the bias spoiler it didn't but I wanted to give it the chance to so I made that first then I moved on to the double circle skirt and there will be a full tutorial coming up for that skirt type very very soon so I got that one sewn up as well and then hung both of those over on the rack so that the bias could do its biasy thing and drop uh, oh I also had the half circle skirt lining for the yellow one I had a half circle skirt lining for that so I made that as well hung them all up to let them do their biasy thing once that had been done I then started working on the bottom 
bodice is. This bodice is very, very easy and it doesn't take a lot of time to do. The one that took me the longest was this one because I interlined the fabric because the fabric was slightly sheer and then lined it as well. So I had to cut three out and then do all the interlining and then do the sewing of this bodice. So this one is the one that took the longest, but they all took a couple of hours to make, maybe three or four hours to get them get them done. So once I had the circle skirts done, I then had the two basically rectangular skirts to contend with. I worked on the yellow one first because I ended up with 13 panels of 11 inches deep and the full width of the fabric. That was all the fabric I had left after I had cut out the bodice. Usually I use between eight to 10 panels in a gathered skirt, gathered and tiered skirt, but I decided, you know what? Yes, I had enough fabric left to possibly make some kind of a top from it, but I thought I'm going to go for an extra full floofy skirt for this one. And I'm so glad that I did. So another reason I went for the tiered and gathered skirt with this print is because it's very, very obviously directional. I didn't want any of the flowers to be kind of like at angles and things like that. I could have done a five panel circle skirt with this but again I only had four meters of a directional print so this was definitely the best choice and use of this fabric I think. This fabric is a very lightweight slightly jacquarded sheer cotton. I knew it needed to be fully lined so that it was decent. To be fair, with the amount of gathering that's gone into the skirt here, I probably could have got away without putting a lining in the skirt, but there is, as I say, a half circle skirt lining this as well. I went for a half circle skirt because, as you can see, it's very densely gathered at the waistline, and I didn't want there to be any added bulk from the gathering from the linings. So the half circle skirt, as you can see here, is very, very kind of like low profile. There is no extra bulk being added at the waistline with this one. Sewing all of these tears together was not the most fun I have ever had in my entire life and it's purely and simply because it's all of the gathering and then the easing of that gathering in so that it all kind of like goes in together nicely it's totally worth it but it's definitely one of the ones that I was putting off doing because it was just a lot of work in this skirt but once you've got it all together it is so incredibly effective. I had four meters of this fabric. I have a tiny amount left to make a scrunchie. I don't even have enough to cut out the tie for the scrunchie that I usually do. That is all that came you know there was obviously a few scraps from the curvy bits of the bodice but yeah every single scrap of the fabric that I had was put into this dress. I love it it's so so floofy. I love the colour as well it's beautiful. I love that there's these kind of like dark blues in here I think it's going to look really nice with my teal cardigan. These are all to me dressy dresses but they're also summer everyday dresses will get worn as such. There's only one that I definitely think of as a date night dress and I'll talk to you that was the last one I finished so I'll talk to you about that one in a bit. I'm over the moon with this I think it's absolutely gorgeous it's one of the reasons I love this bodice is because it takes such a small amount of fabric so you can go to town on the skirts that you put on this and uh, yeah I am over the moon with this dress I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I'm so glad that I got my hands on some of this cotton from Cloth Edit it's beautiful absolutely beautiful so love 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 this dress and love how it turned out the next dress that i worked on was the black viscose this is absolutely beautiful fabric but it is incredibly floaty and drapey which is why i went for the double circle skirt for this one because i thought it would be a nice combination of a super super full skirt which i could dress up and put a petticoat on with which looks awesome but it's also whilst there's a lot of fabric in this dress because there's five meters just under five meters I do have enough for a top possibly there's a lot of fabric in the skirt but because it's so floaty and drapey it doesn't look overwhelming this print I don't think was directional I tend to line my fabrics out on my cutting table then I'll stand at either end of the cutting table and have a look at them and see if one way looks right over another. This is one of those ones where I think the roses go all over the place so I don't think it was directional. If it is I couldn't tell but you know if like with these flowers upside down 
that definitely looks wrong. I had been thinking about using a maxi skirt for this dress but I decided that I was like I like maxi dresses I don't wear them that often so I went for the double circle skirt because I had enough fabric and two because with a double circle skirt and it not being directional I could nest the pattern pieces which meant that I ended up with a little bit of this fabric left over so I have enough I think for a top which is awesome. I left that fabric to the side because I didn't try and prioritize print placement with the bodice and I just got really really lucky. There are two scales of flowers on this print the slightly smaller ones like this one and the ones that are on the bodice and then the much much bigger ones i cut out this is fully self-lined with the same fabric except for the waistband and there is no skirt lining on this one just the bodice but i cut out two fronts and was just hoping one of them would be good for the front of the bodice i did as i say have a little bit of fabric reserved if i needed to get fussy cut the bodice out but i decided to wing it and i'm glad that i did so this is the larger scale roses which is nice but i think it was better going for the smaller scale print on the front. It is a very, very busy print and there are a lot of lines and seams in the bodice of this dress, but I love how this looks. To me, this looks very Dolce & Gabbana-esque again, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, as I mentioned, I did make the skirt on this one first so that it could do its biasy thing. And as you can see in the twirls, it's definitely done some biasy things and uh, dropped in certain places. So this, is completely unfinished but I needed to film those twirls for the lookbook to show you what I had sewn in May and beginning of June and also show you guys for this video so I will be hemming this next week. I like to give my dresses a decent amount of time to drop on the bias usually about a week sometimes six months that is the extreme that's the longest I've ever left a hem to level I've never had to re-level that hem. I think I mentioned as well that the lining on this one is half circle skirt so cut on the bias so again this one was poking out and does need to be leveled and hemmed so the yellow dress and this one are not complete fully but nearly and i am so excited to get them done so that i can wear them i love how this has turned out i think it looks awesome with the petticoat underneath of it i'm planning on making another petticoat out of a different fabric just to try it and see how it comes out cotton lawn i think it could be really cool I'm not sure. We shall see. But yeah, I, I do love this dress. I'm so pleased that it's done. And thank you so much to Jane for making me buy this fabric. It is awesome. Next up, I finished the chestnut tree print dress, which I do have on under this shirt. This print was another one that peeps pointed me in the direction of during a live hangout and then sat there for about two hours watching me back and forth go do I need this no I don't yes I do no I don't yes I do no and then ordered it during the live hangout and I'm so glad that I did because it is absolutely gorgeous I love all the greens I love the little pops of pink from the chestnut flowers it's beautiful now this is a directional print and again like I say I lay the fabric out stood at the top and the bottom of the table as it were to work out which was the right way and which was the wrong way. That meant that I was going to do something like my five panel circle skirt which there is a full tutorial for up here. The reason I did the five panel circle skirt is so that you could do a full circle skirt with a directional print and not have your print, your flower, your flamingo, whatever squiffy on the sides of your circle skirt which is why there's five panels. The it did mean that I had to cut out each panel individually and make sure that I flipped it so that I ended up with mirror images of them so that they would go round in a full circle. That's worked out beautifully. I had five meters as I say so I knew that I was going to try and get some kind of a shirt out of whatever I had left and I have managed to cut out the Gertie 5895 shirt as well and I love how these look together. Now this shirt is out of print but if you can find it I highly recommend that you get it because it is a really really awesome one if you enjoy the 50s sort of styling which I obviously do. I have added two inches of length to this shirt though because the original is incredibly cropped and the first two that I made were way too cropped for, for my personal preference. This one just hits above my waist. I also ended up with enough fabric to cut out well decent sized weird pieces of fabric enough to cut out 17 meters of bias binding as well so this dress is fully hemmed this one is finished so that yes i even finished this one by hand 
sitting here the other night watching Deep Space Nine. I absolutely love how this has turned out. Now, like I say, I did cut this skirt out first because I did think it possibly could drop on the bias. It didn't, which was really nice. It's a nice, stable cotton lawn. I really like cotton lawn for the grey stress, especially with a skirt like this. I was considering doing a tiered and gathered skirt with this one because, again, cotton lawn, a nice amount of poof, but I'm glad that I went with the yellow one for that because of the print for that one. I love how this has turned out and I do think for as much as I keep saying that I don't really wear separates I think that this might be the kind of way forward for me to include some separates in my wardrobe because this just looks like a different type of dress it's a much more covered up dress I really enjoy having different options with my clothes so I'm very very glad that I'd had enough fabric to get this shirt out of the remnants as I say, of cutting out this dress. My my tip for this kind of thing is cut out your biggest pieces first. So you, the center front panel for me on the fold, the side panels and the back panels on a single layer. Once you've got your biggest pieces cut out, then try and fit in all the smaller pieces around that. Again, making sure that you are re respecting the grain line and also making sure that you have everything the right way up. So as you can see, all my flowers are pointing upwards because this, as I say, is a directional print. I am I'm over the moon with how this one turned out and again I think because it's a cotton lawn it looks very different the last two were very dressy dresses this one is much more of a daytime dress in my opinion however if I put my petticoat on underneath of it put some heels on some blingy jewelry I definitely would wear this out for an evening as well so I do you think it's like a multi-use dress but it's not quite as dressy as the previous two the final grey dress that i managed to get finished is this one this is absolutely beautiful and i am so so pleased that it's finally in dress form and not just a beautiful piece of fabric that i take out every now and again and look at this is three yards or 2.8 meters of the cotton silk blend that Spoonflower used to do with an all over roses print on it. So I bought a bunch of different prints from Spoonflower when I was making and wearing shorter dresses with full skirts and so three yards 2.8 meters was more than enough. I don't like that skirt length on me anymore so I have a bunch of these prints in this yard or this yardage of some amazing prints that I just didn't know what to do with. So the grey stress is really good because the bodice takes a small amount of fabric because it's a really small bodice. So with this one I have cut the skirt on the cross grain. What I did was put the bodice pattern piece on the fabric as close to the top as I could without getting any of the white border and then measured how much I would have left for the length of the skirt. Thankfully 29 inches which is actually my skirt length preference. Then as I say I used the full width of the fabric or the full length of the fabric but on the cross grain for the width of the skirt and I have pleated it and they th I've used the pleating and gathering math to do this but rather than gather behind the pleats I've just pleated them again so there's multiple bo box pleats on top of each other. It's given a lovely effect. This fabric has a really nice hand. It's not exactly drapey but it's not stiff either. It's not floaty but it's not I don't, it's just it's a really lovely fabric I enjoy wearing it I've made quite a lot of things out of it because I have quite a lot of it and I'm very sad that Spoonflower no longer do this base this is another reason I've been hoarding these prints for so long is because I can't replace them but this will be a date night dress this is definitely an evening going out dress also it's dry clean only because this print does fade when it's washed which is something to bear in mind if you have any of it. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a date night dress because it's a dry clean only dress and I can't afford to have my clothes dry cleaned frequently so I don't and, and you know, I don't want to ruin anything as well. I love how this has turned out so much so that the stash that I have up there of the other spoon flower three yard 2.8 meter cuts could end up being something very very similar. I, I'm not even sure if I'm going to apologise for that because as I say patterns are expensive and you should make them work hard for you but yeah I can see there's going to be a lot more of these in my future. I just I love 
I love, love, love this bodice. So whilst it's the same bodice repeated over and over and over again, with the different skirts on it and the different types of fabric used, I do think it gives different effects. I know this kind of sewing is not going to be for everybody. I mean, I even did a video of batch sewing and saying I was never going to do that again. That one was for three navy dresses, which were all different patterns, but it was all navy sewing, so it's navy, navy thread for everything so I made all the skirts then all the sleeves then all the bodices then put them all together hated the process I actually have really enjoyed this I've had to change thread numerous times because obviously every single one needed a different different color thread but making the same thing over in the different types of fabrics with the different skirts on them I found very very enjoyable I also liked that I didn't have to concentrate on instructions I knew how to put this together and how to make it and how to make it look good so there wasn't any kind of like fitting and trying on because I've gotten to the point where I know this dress fit I mean it was drafted for me so of course it fits but you do you know what I mean when you're making a new pattern there's the mock-up stage hopefully you don't go in with your very expensive fabric straight out of the gate but yeah there's the mock-up phase or the wearable mock-up phase and then the fittings and the tweakings and the things like that which is fun and I do enjoy doing that but when I find something that I love and that I wear and that when I go to get dressed in the morning I pull out of the wardrobe being excited to put on when I have those kind of patterns like the Grace, the Anna, the 8577, the Eve etc etc I find joy in sewing those things as well because I don't have to concentrate on it too much I can have my DS9 on in this case or audiobook or you know talk with a friend and just enjoy the actual sewing process rather than thinking about oh what do I have to do next how does this go together and as I say patterns are expensive and they really should work hard for us and if you can make something look different in different ways and use different fabrics to achieve different results I don't see anything wrong with making multiples of the same bodice skirt shirt etc etc if you love it and you wear it do it. Sewing and getting dressed is supposed to be a joyful experience. It's something that you want to do, that you enjoy, that is, that, that just makes you smile. And the same with getting dressed. And for me, that's repeating patterns multiple, multiple times in different fabrics and seeing which ones get worn most, which ones I enjoy, which ones I feel are more special occasion than others. Yeah, I, I just, I love the process. I am going to do a maxi skirt on one of these. I am going to put some trousers on another one for a jumpsuit. I think that's going to look awesome. I have an idea for adding a frill and a ruffle to the top of the dress to get, make it look very much like the Trashy Diva Hollywood dress and to be either worn off the shoulders or up on the top of the strap. So, you know, I do think you can tweak patterns that you love and add different things and variations in them to make them work really, really hard for you and just be something that you love and wear in your wardrobe as well. Let me know in the comments section down below if you have a TNT pattern that you make multiple times and which one of these four grace dresses do you like the most or do you like them all for different reasons? I would be very interested to hear what you think. If you've enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this pattern hacking video here.